He's clearly a national leader on transportation policy and programming. And please welcome me, well, join me in welcoming. <laughs> Chairman DeFazio. Uh, good morning. Um, I unfortunately didn't have the uh, opportunity to be here and hear from uh, Chairman uh, Barrasso. Uh, we recently had a meeting to discuss about moving forward on the long-term reauthorization. Uh, the bottom line, uh, as you know, is uh, the federal government has not been a good partner uh, for many years now. Uh, we haven't uh, indexed or raised the gas tax since 1993. And, um, you know, more than two dozen states have gone forward with gas tax increases. Virtually nobody has suffered any political consequences uh, because of that. Um, in fact, in New Jersey, when they raised it a quarter, the only two people who lost re-election were people who voted against the gas tax increase. Uh, I think there's a, a point at which the American people get it. They're tired of congestion. They're tired of blowing out tires and breaking wheels and potholes. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're tired of transit systems that are decrepit and don't work. Uh, so uh, it's time for... Uh, the federal government to step up, uh, step back in, and become a better partner. The key is going to be revenues. Um, you know, I'm not, I, the first hearing we did on this issue this year I tried to t put a little different perspective on it. I mean, we've heard endlessly, time and time again, some of you here have testified, uh, you know, American Society of Civil Engineers, I mean, the list goes on and on. Everybody come in, we can quantify the need, uh, we can quantify what it's going to cost. Uh, and we've been talking about it for years, uh, and uh, there's been no action, meaningful action here. The, uh, so w I reversed it a little bit to say, okay, what if we don't act? Uh, now, the numbers vary because, uh, you know, it's hard to estimate the cost of a disaster, but uh, when the tunnels under the Hudson River go, uh, estimates run from $100 million a day, uh, you know, cost to the economy. It'd probably take five years on an emergency basis to uh, build new tunnels. Uh, it'd be unbelievably expensive and disruptive. Uh, you know, the Brent Spence Bridge between Ohio and uh, Kentucky has maybe 10 years of life left before they, I don't know, they bring back ferries or something. I'm not sure what they're going to do as an alternative. Uh, and you can go around the, the country and look at things. The two bridges over the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Columbia River in uh, between Oregon and Washington will go in the earthquake, uh, and uh, you know then I-5 is no more, uh, the third busiest truck route in America. So uh, the costs of doing nothing are absolutely astronomical. Uh, so I've been really focusing on this. Unfortunately, my committee doesn't have jurisdiction over revenues. That falls to the Ways and Means Committee. They were going to hold a hearing today. It's postponed until, I guess, next week. Uh, to begin to uh, cogitate on how we might do this. I've offered, uh, when the Republicans were in charge, they said, well, what's the most de minimis approach we could take and maybe we could get done? And I decided, okay, let's just look at indexing the gas and diesel tax, cap the annual increase at one and a half cents a gallon, raise your hand. I would say to people, if you think you're going to lose your election, if gas goes up one and a half cents a gallon, uh, no one would raise their hand. And uh, we could uh, bond out, uh, you know, $500 billion dollars uh, uh, by doing that. Now people say, well, you're creating a cliff in the future. Sure, I'm creating a cliff in the future, but uh, you know, by then we will be moving uh, with vehicle miles traveled uh, and uh, looking potentially for other sources of revenue for the, uh, for the system. But the bottom line is, uh, if we don't do it uh, you know, now, uh, it, we're just going to continue to deteriorate. So. Um, you know, I wish I could be here and offer you a much more uh, upbeat uh, assessment. I have been meeting with uh, people from the White House. Uh, you know, there seems to be some uh, conflict at the White House. Last year, I was in a meeting uh, with the president where uh, we, uh, Chairman Schuster at that point had decided to retire. So he was in favor of the gas tax, which we talked about at this meeting uh, with, uh, with the president. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Senator Thune and others said, no, Democrats will just attack you. I said, no, I'll stand in front of him or beside him, whatever you want me to do, but uh, we've got to get this done. 
uh, and the president expressed uh, that he would uh, support a substantial increase. Unfortunately, that was never translated into policy by the White House. We had the D.J. Grimmon plan, uh, which uh, was dependent upon cutting $200 billion uh, from existing transportation, mostly transit, moving it over here and putting it into a new generous grant program where you would get a four to one match. You put up four, the feds put up one. Uh, and, oh, by the way, uh, you know, you could also sell uh, off all of your public assets uh, and follow the lead of a failed program in Australia that they called asset recycling. Uh, and, uh, you know, then uh, after you've done that, I said, and I, I asked the, uh, they have a salesman, it was the ambassador down there, he ran the program. I don't know why he's their ambassador, but he is. And he's been here having some of you in to meet and talk about the virtues of asset recycling. And I said to him, what happens after the first time you sell the asset? What do you do the next time uh, when you have nothing left to sell? How do you maintain the existing system? Or are we just going to sell it all? Uh, and he said, well, you're going to have a stream of revenue. I said, yeah, isn't your gas tax about four times what ours is? Oh, yeah. And I said, well, uh, maybe we ought to deal with sustained funding instead of your, uh, your failed ideas. But, uh, you know. <laughs> That, uh, that was essentially the policy that was put forward. I'm not aware of any member of Congress who supported uh, that so-called plan. In fact, it's reported that uh, someone on the president's staff thought it would be a good idea uh, to put it into a State of the Union, pass my transportation plan, and it's reported by the press. He said, take that out. That's stupid. I don't support that. Uh, so um, there's some faint hope there if we can get to the president uh, and uh, if we can sort of hold hands and jump off uh, the uh, crumbling uh, bridge together uh, that we can do uh, federal revenue. So that's really the bottom line. I could go on much longer about uh, the individual needs. I mean, you know, there's a lot of concern about uh, how we're going to move forward and reduce, uh, you know, carbon emissions from transportation, which is the largest single emitter uh, in, in aggregate in the country. Uh, you know, I think we're going to move toward electrification. But uh, if you, you know, if when you approach uh, that issue, uh, bringing the system up to a state of good repair would be a good first step. We wasted 3.1 billion gallons of fuel idling in congestion last year. Uh, transit ridership in many places is falling off because people have to get to work or they have to get to home to be with their kids. And if the system is likely to break down, you get on it up in uh, Maryland and, you know, somewhere before the D.C. line, they say, oh, sorry, Metro broke down again. Uh, there'll be a bus along in an hour or two. Uh, people just say, you know, to heck with that. Uh, so if we did the investments we need, $106 billion to bring transit up to a state of good repair, let alone build out new transit options for people, uh, you know, 40% of the national highway system has deteriorated to the point where you need to totally rebuild it, not just put another coat of asphalt on it like the famous Obama program uh, that we had. And, uh, and then finally, uh, you know, looking at the uh, 40 to 50,000 bridges that need a replacement or total restructuring. Uh, you know, this could be a huge jobs program, a huge boost for the economy, a huge uh, boost for our international competitiveness. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, for life of me, I don't know why uh, we can't get it done. So that's why you're all here in Washington. Uh, you've got to go to the Hill and convince uh, your member of Congress or senator uh, why uh, this is uh, of extraordinary importance, why the American people care about this, and why they're not going to lose their election if they actually have the guts to stand up and uh, say, let's get it done now. And it's not going to be a big win for either party. It's going to be a win for all America. I have people who say to me, well, you're going to give the president a big, uh, a big re-election thing. I say, no, we got lots of things to disagree with the president over. We don't need to disagree or make political uh, the rebuilding of America's infrastructure. Uh, that really uh, is something that should be and has been, for the most part, nonpartisan ever since Dwight Eisenhower uh, came up with the idea of a funded uh, national highway uh, system after World War II. So, uh, you know, it's been a long time uh, since then. Uh, this is actually the 100th anniversary of the first gas tax in the United States of America, which was in my home state of Oregon. It's a user fee. American people get it. It's a user fee. And they're willing to pay a reasonable user fee, particularly uh, if we bring back uh, Article One projects, which is uh, what some call earmarks, you know, the Constitution's pretty specific. Power of the person, post roads, those belong to Congress. Why is it that an unelected bureaucrat 
uh, who sits downtown here in Washington, D.C., gets to determine who gets discretionary money or whether, you know, uh, no offense to anybody here, but in your state, all the wisdom resides in your state capital and however it is that you apportion money around the state. Uh, why shouldn't uh, elected representatives through a transparent process uh, be able to spend a small amount of money, bring it home, and show people uh, what they're going to get for a small increase uh, in their gas tax? Uh, you know, I reformed this process before we lost the House uh, in 2010. Uh, I had uh, 417 members of Congress, I believe, submit uh, for what were called earmarks. They weren't. It was directed spending. Uh, and uh, I made them uh, submit them online. They were transparent. Uh, they had to file affidavits saying they had no financial interest. They had to show it was consistent with, not necessarily funded by or in their state transportation investment plan, and they had to show they had local support. And maybe there's a few other things we could do to, to make it even better. But uh, I think that's the key to getting this done, uh, and I intend to bring, uh, bring back uh, you know, Congress to the table here with what we will now call Article One projects, and hopefully, uh, we will uh, we will succeed all together in getting uh, a transformative, long-term surface uh, transportation bill uh, by October first, twenty twenty. But I'm going to need your help, uh, so go forth and uh, beat them up. Thanks very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. I, I have, took me 43 hours to get here, and I had two hours sleep. But other than that, everything's fine. Uh, question? Thank you, uh, Representative Fascio. Thank you for your leadership on, on transportation issues. You mentioned the fact that your state was the first to do a gas tax, and you're also the first state to pilot a BMT program. I just want to know what's the status of that BMT program? Where are you uh, with that? Well, um, we are on our second pilot on BMT. It's still uh, not particularly representative. It's a volunteer program, uh, but the version two is to try and see uh, what works uh, in terms of what has more public acceptance. I think there's eight different options on how you would be assessed. You can either pay a flat fee per mile. Or, I mean, anyway, they have a whole bunch of iterations. Uh, you can record it yourself or it can be uh, electronically reported. But it, it's still not getting to what I think is going to be the big nut to crack here. Uh, I don't feel, I feel strongly about this, that it would not be fair uh, to go to a flat uh, VMT for everybody. Uh, you know, if you jump on 205 in Portland at rush hour and add to the backup, which goes from the Washington state line, you know, many miles into Oregon or going the other way to depend upon the time of day, should you pay the same per mile as a farmer or rancher out in eastern Oregon who has to drive 20 miles to the feed store? That's not right. Uh, so you're going to have to go to congestion pricing, which means uh, real-time uh, pricing, which means tracking uh, in one form or another. Uh, if you saw the great article about six weeks ago in the New York Times where, you know, all your apps are on here, and you, you try and shut everything off. Just see how many hours it'll take you, every single app you have. And even some of them you shut off, they're still tracking you. And, but, they're, but don't worry, they're anonymized. Well, not exactly, uh, because what the New York Times did is they bought the data from various firms that had apps, and then they just used a mapping software and so they had tracks for people, and they could show, they could find who the person was and where they worked, where their kids went to school, and everything else from theoretically anonymized data. So it's all out there already. But when you say the government's going to do that, as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, marketers or the private sector, uh, you know, people uh, in the rural parts of my district say, yeah, after you get uh, my gun out of my, your, you know, my gun out of my cold, dead hand, you can track me where I go every day. So uh, we've got to get we've got to get through uh, we've got to get through that debate, which means I think that we should, uh, when we do this bill, look at doing a, a national uh, a national pilot program and try and do it in a way that is more representative of where we want to go with the program. Uh, uh, but I haven't worked out uh, the details of that yet. We could move more quickly in commercial uh, vehicles uh, because you know for. Uh, 
right now, uh, theoretically, I mean, all uh, commercial uh, heavy truck drivers have electronic recording devices. Uh, and, uh, you know, we could move there because uh, you don't have the issues of privacy. We would have opposition from the independent truck drivers. A lot of the ATA, the big uh, trucking, bigger trucking companies would probably support it. Uh, I had some very preliminary discussions with them. Oh, way back uh, around 2009 about uh, how about we get rid of all these stupid taxes, the new truck tax, because we want you to have new, more efficient ta uh, trucks, so tire tax, that miscellaneous, maybe even the diesel tax, and move uh, to a, uh, a weight mile tax, uh, of, you know, where we are basically, uh, you know, tracking you, uh, and uh, you're, you're paying that way. And we had some interesting uh preliminary discussions, then we lost the House and that issue went away. But, um, you know, I, I think that uh, there is some promise there, although my state in its infinite wisdom may do away with, uh, I've for years had to defend our weight mile tax. It's the fairest way of going forward. Our state has been contacted recently by other states saying, hey, how does this work? And uh, it's all electronic based. People like it. Uh, but they're obsessed with doing a uh, some kind of carbon tax, or so uh, you know. One of some of my state legislators are talking uh, about doing away with our weight mile tax. So I'm now engaged in a little struggle at home with idiots who, uh, uh, you know, uh, are in the state legislature who don't have a very comprehensive view of transportation. So that's where we're at, but I, I would like to do, and, and this is something where Sam Graves and I agree, uh, look at a national pilot program. Sam will say he wants to go immediately to VMT. We had a number of witnesses come to the hearing saying, no, that's, no, we can't do that. It's not gonna work. Can't get there quick enough. We have to do gas and diesel for the near future, move to VMT in the future. Join me in <laughs> Okay, all right, thanks. <laughs>